for YouTube. So today we'll be going over a lead code problem of medium difficulty called remove duplicates from sorted array 2. Now, if you are a sane person, you'll be asking why aren't we removing duplicates from sorted array 1? Well, the reason being is I was unaware that there was a sorted array 1. And that's the gist of it. Would it have been easier to do sorted array 1 and then move forward to the medium difficult sorted array 2? Yes. But anyway, here we are. And I'll show you my process of how we go around doing this. So first of all, we notice that we have a class called solution and a method. Method is a function within a class called remove duplicates. It takes in self, that being the instance that will be calling the function. It takes in a variable called nums. Nums must be a list containing integer values, and it must return an integer. That's how you read this. So we have a function. We're defining a function. The function is called remove duplicates. Self refers to the instance that will be calling it. So let's say we have a solution one. Solution one can recall remove duplicates. Self will get switched with solution one. We then have a parameter called nums, and nums must be a list, as we see right here, and the list must contain integers. This arrow right here defines our return type, where our return type must be an integer. Now you're asking, uh, why is this in Python? Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> it should be in C++. There we go. There's my code. Right. Oh, and my submissions, I think I have quite a few. Uh, these runtime errors, for some reason, my special case had to appear before my base case, which makes sense now that I think about it. But I think that this is my best submission. Yeah, uh, so runtime zero milliseconds, it beats 100% with a memory of 10.9 megabytes, beating 62.77%. Uh, let's go to the first, the most recent submission. And it's a runtime of eight milliseconds with a memory of 10.9 megabytes. We'll go, let's check a little more. Let's go here. Uh, there's four milliseconds of runtime with 10.8 megabytes of memory, blah, blah, blah. So let's just go back here. And let's go to description. Let's go over the code. So uh, I'm just going to change this to Python so we aren't distracted. Right. Here is our problem uh, analysis. Given an integer array called nums stored in non-decreasing order, when it says non-decreasing order, all that means is increasing order. So it'll go from A, B, C, where B is greater than A, C is greater than B, and thereby C is greater than A. Remove some duplicates in place. By in place, it means don't create an additional vector and you, and return that. No, no, no. The vector must be sorted. It must be uh, modified in place, such that each unique element appears at most twice. So if you had a vector of a a a, you have to return a a one a removed. The relative order of the elements should be kept the same. So just because your vector is let's say a a a b. You can't not have it as A, B, A. No, nope. you have to keep the order the same. Since it's impossible to change the length of the array in some languages, you must have in you must instead have the result be placed in the first part of the array nums. Uh, this right here, essentially, if you cannot modify the length of your array, essentially all they want you to do is move the elements to the front and that's the elements that will be considered. I didn't do that. More formally, if there are k elements after removing the duplicates, the first k elements of num should hold the final result. It does not matter what you leave beyond the first k elements. So what they're basically saying is, let's say that you, for some reason, cannot change the length of your array. Then instead of doing that, just move all the corrected uh, data to the front, the first, one second, excuse me, move all the data that has been corrected, say k being 5, so the 5 data to the front, and the program is built such that it will only consider the first five elements. I don't do that, but that's what it means. Return k after placing the final result in the first k slot of, of nums. How did I think of this? What I thought was, in the start, we'll have an array called nums with length, let's say, 3. And the 3 being a, a, a. Once we're done uh, assessing the problem, our array nums will now contain a, a. k will be the value of the initial nums being 3 minus the value of the uh, set of find the problem k. Sorry, let me explain that one more time because it sounds weird. Let's say we had an array with a, a equal into length being, let's say, length equals three to three. And after sorting it, because we can only have at most two duplicates, we have a, a, we now have length 
equal to 2. Therefore, therefore, what I initially thought is k will equal to this length of the first, the initial value of our length minus the ending value 3 by 2 being 1. That's what I initially thought it was. So let's go back down here. Uh, not allocate extra memory space for another array. That's what I say. You cannot create another array. You must do this by modifying the input array in place with O1 extra memory. Order 1. So it does not change. This custom judge, this just sounds scary, but it isn't. It's just used here to show what will be used, the program that will be used to test your code. We have an input array. We have expected nums. In k, integer k will be set to the value returned by remove duplicates. And then we will assert k is it equal to expected nums length? If it's not, the program will just end and you will just get an error. If it is, then it'll just go down to this for loop where it will make sure that every element in assert nums at position i is equal to expected nums at position i. And if all assertions pass, then your solution will be accepted. Now I'm going to go grab a glass of water and I'm not going to pause this video, so we can just chill here for like a minute. All right, I'm back. Uh, here's some example inputs, but we notice that nums array will equal to the value, it will equal to the array contain the values 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3. Therefore, after running our program called remove duplicates, it should be 1, 1, 2, 2, 3. Uh, here's an explanation. We don't need to worry about that. And uh, here's some constraints. Now, listen to me. When you are beginning your uh, to create your function that will satisfy the problem, go ahead and read everything. I have a large tendency not to do this. I write my code and then I wonder why it's not working. Then I have to come back and read everything here. Right. So uh, anyway, this is the constraint. We notice that the length of the array will have to be at minimum 1 to a maximum of 3 times 10 raised to the fourth power. And we notice the values contained within the array will have the lowest value of negative 10 raised to the fourth power and the highest value of 10 raised to the fourth power. Nums is sorted in non-decreasing order. This just means num is sorted in increasing order. Uh, as for discussions, as I said before in videos, I do not consider discussions until I'm done with my code, but let's just see what people have to say. Uh, we see an acceptance rate of 53.3%, accepted submissions. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, this problem is day elite coin chance for February day six. Uh, <laughs> your problem, dude. The main idea is to use binary search to find the rightmost value that equals the current value. Uh, Binary search. If you wanted to binary search, to find middle value. No, no, you can't use your target value. You can specify it. Uh, I don't use binary code. Uh, works on machine is the second time I've had their TS behave differently than TS locally. This is frustrating. Uh, works on my machine doesn't work on their machine. Weird. Spoiler alert, I'm not reading that. Java faster solution. How is it possible in all one? You need to iterate at least one time. So uh, if you are taking computer science, you'll go over, over big O notation. You learn things such that if your time is 3n, we don't consider the coefficient, uh, we'll just become n. Coefficient. Coefficient, so if, let's say we had 3x squared, coefficient would be 3. So uh, let's stay here. Let's just go back to C++. So, and uh, this is our code. Yep, now let's go ahead and start writing. What have we done? No, I'm joking. So when I began writing this code, I did not just start uh, at the final solution. I decided that I would use iterative development. By iterative development, I mean just starting off with a small a function that satisfies one part of the problem and continu continually doing that until I have a total solution. Notice here in iteration zero, all I want to do is find the distance. By distance, I mean this. Let's say we had uh, one, 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 two. The distance would be 
the value between two unique numbers. So first, our first unique number will have to be 1, and the distance between 1 and 2 will be 1, 2, 3. That's what I meant by find distance. This function worked well, that's all I wanted to do. With this going to final solution, I wasn't sure yet. Then keep on going down. Next function, uh, the next one was to find all unique elements. So let's say we had uh, a, 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 B, B, C, D. This function should be able to find A, then find B, then find C, then find D. I'm telling you right now, this did not go <laughs> into my final solution. Well, it didn't go in this way. Right, so, uh, and then we had iteration two. If elements appear more than twice, we must remove elements. So if we found, uh, let's say, let's do A, A, A. We have to, once we're done, it should be uh, A, A. That's what it should be. And here's some just test cases, but I had a lot more test cases. This is where I wrote the final function right here. That's it, with a lot more test cases, as you can see. But we won't do that here. We'll just go here. Let me just think about it. Uh, we do want to write this. Hmm. I'll write it here. Don't write it in VS Code. It'll be easier for us to see. Where uh, would it be easier for you guys to see? Be VS Code or C Code Blocks? Hmm. Let me just create another file. Let's call it uh, lead code. Lead code remove duplicates. Let's see plus plus. <coughs> mm. Yeah, let's just uh, begin. So include IO stream for basic input output. We'll have to include vector because we're using the vector class. Uh, vector is a template. And uh, let's do an int main. Int main is a function that's always called. Uh, return. Return zero. You know when you're good at doing something, but if you think someone's watching you, you aren't as good. For some reason it happens to me whenever I'm recording a video. Right. Let's go here and let's begin. So we know that it's integer function, so it must return an integer. It's called remove duplicates. Duplicates, and it takes in a vector that can only contain integers. Uh, it'll be a reference and it will only be called nums. Uh, that's it. Let's just for now let's just have return zero just for now. Uh, this code isn't compiling. Do not have my C++ stuff. Mm. VS code is throwing me an error. Debug C++ file. Error exists at running pre-launch expert to file debugging and show errors. Okay, for some reason my C++ is not identifying my C, my VS code is not identifying my C++. That's weird, I haven't had this error before. So vector was not clear in the scope. So essentially, uh, C++ and my VS code is not getting along. I don't need to set my compilers. Uh, that should be fine. Okay, vector int and nums. You know what, I don't think this will be a good waste. I, mean, I don't think this will be a good use of my time. I'll have to figure out what the hell is happening here. I'll just get rid of everything. And we will close this. And I guess we just have to write it here. We just minimize all my other functions. Minimize this. And 
list right here. So uh, we notice above all our requisite stuff have been included and we just start writing our code and require remove duplicates, remove duplicates. And because I already have two iterations of the first one, second one, I'm just going to call it remove duplicates delete, which takes a vector of type int reference uh, numbers. All right, let's do return zero for now. And we can actually finally start getting to some code. So let's just start with the special cases. So special, special cases. And that being if uh, our nums dot size, size is equal to one, all we do is return one. Which is obvious because if we had a, a vector of A, it obviously doesn't contain any duplicates, so we just return the vector of A. We return the length of the vector just being one. And then we can check uh, if nums.size is equal to two. And if so, all we're gonna do is return two. Now, if we had the case of A, B, there's no duplicates, we return the size. If we had the case of AA, they are duplicates, but we allowed one duplicate. So one original A and one duplicate, that being A again, we just return two. Now we can just start doing a little more special cases and that being if our function is in the form of AAA. -A -A. Notice, or just AA. Uh, this shows that the first element A and the, set and the last element are the same. How the hell do we get rid of that? Well, we'll do a special case, and all we have to do is if nums of front, this will grab the first element is equal to nums of back. This will grab the last element. So here's an example. We had a a a nums of front will be a nums of back would be a. <coughs> then we define if nums of size is greater than two. This ensures that we aren't doing AA, it's AAA at minimum. This is, uh, let's say, uh, if vector, this will happen, contains I know my explanations don't sound good right now, but I'm just a little uh, at uneased with still making videos. Hopefully, I'll get better at doing it. So uh, this if stands for if and only if. So this states that if, act, if and only if fact contains multiple occurrence of same element, that is the only time this condition will hold true. Then we say while size size is greater than 2, all we're going to do is Nums dot. We can use a pop back, but I'll just do an erase. Nums dot begin. Hmm. Don't do erase or pop back. Let's do nums dot pop back and see what happens. Nums dot pop back. Uh, this will pop the last element from the vector. So if we had a a a, once you run pop back, we'll, this will end up becoming a a a. So right now we're done with those special cases and let's move on to our base case. Same, okay, let me just go over this again. Special cases. If our vector is of length one, it's a vector containing an element called a. a can be any integer. All we do is return one. If our vector is of length two and if it contains a, a, that's fine. We're allowed to have duplicates. We just return two. If it's of length two and it has a, b, that's still fine. We can still just return two. At this special case, if our vector contains elements that are uh, the first and last element are the same, irrelevant of the size, the only way for this to be the same is if the vector is of some uh, large, some of irrelevant length, and the first and last element are the same. We can effectively keep on removing the last element such that the length of the vector will be equal to two. Also, my dog is barking. Uh, Pitbull. So I'm gonna go check on that. Give me a minute.
My dog is not a fan of eating dog food. So yeah, uh, this can only occur, this one, uh, this special case can only occur right here if our vector contains the same element uh, and the first and last position. And if it does contain the element at the, first, the same element, the first and last position, we know that no other element exists because this is an increasing order. It's sorted. All we're going to do then is pop the last element until our num set size is not greater than 2. We'll now start doing our base case. Uh, I'll create some variables I'll call in first, set this to nums up front. So right now we have one variable and it's equal to the current first element of our vector. I'll create another variable called in second. And for now, I'll just say it equal to first. So, so far we know that these two vectors both uh, contain the value of the first element in our vector. Uh, then let's just do and create a position. So we'll set, set pause. And let's say in position is equal to zero. We'll get to what that does later. Now I want to make sure I can find the index to check the value and set distance. So uh, index used to check the value and distance. Let's call it int index equal to one. And we say, okay, now. So far, we have four variables. We have an integer called first, and it's equal to the first element of our vector. We have an integer called second, which is also set to the first element of our vector. Then we have an integer called position, and set equal to one. We then have an int index, and set equal to one. And this is where we begin. So while second uh, is not equal to nums.back, so while second is not equal to the last element and index plus position uh, is less than numbers.size because these both of these values will be constantly incremented. We don't want to start looping over when we have nothing to loop over. Or should I say iterate? Uh, let's begin. So that's our, this will be our outer loop right here. And we'll now start with our inner loop while nums at uh, position plus index is equal to first. So here's the thing. Right now, nums will be our vector and position and index will start at 0 plus 1. And we know the first time 0 plus 1 is just 1 equals to first. So this will hold true. But we'll add an additional condition and uh, index plus position is less than numbers of size to ensure we do not start iterating over values that will be out of range all we're going to do is increase index by one index plus equals one let's think about what we're doing right here let's say we had a vector of one 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 two the first time first will be set let me just actually do it first is set to the value of 1. Second is also set to the value of 1. Nums will be set to position plus index. Why is position 0? What's a one? What's index 1? 0 plus 1 will be 1. But nums at position 1 is equal to first. Therefore, this condition right here will hold true. And all we're going to do is increase index plus 1. So now index is going to be 0 plus 2. But the, but the second element is also a 1. You see what's happening? Second element right here is also a 1. So it'll happen again that it'll hold true and we get index plus 1. Now index is 3. And there we go. Our third element, 0, 1, 2, 3, is a 2. We've now done two things. We've incremented index such that it now points or it now holds a distance between two unique values. So right now we have two unique values or the distance between two unique values. So an if index uh, if index is greater than two, this means that there are more than two elements between two unique elements. So again, if we had a vector, let's say uh, one, 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 two, we already established that index at this time will be equal to three. That means that the distance between a unique value of one, or let's just say a and the unique value of 2, let's say b, is greater than 2, all we're going to do is 
remove it such that the index, the distance between them is not greater than two. That's all you're going to keep on doing. Uh, let's see. We'll just do a quick nums.erase. Nums.erase. This is used to remove elements. It also returns the... Uh, what does it return? It returns an iterator. Right. But we aren't going to be using that, but if you want to know. We'll do nums.begin plus position plus two. Uh, nums.begin being the it'll be an iterator pointing to the first element of our vector plus position right now will be zero. And why are we adding two? Because at most we want two duplicates. So uh, then we'll have nums.begin, nums.begin plus position plus index, right? We'll then set index equal to one once we're done with this. And we'll set second equal to nums at position plus index, right? -o. So this essentially is uh, nums dot erase, starting position start and end. And it will be raised such that it will include start and it will not include end. <coughs> so again, it will include start, but it will not include end. Now, this is not the case, else the index is not greater than two. All we're gonna do is say first is equal to second position plus equals index. I spelled this wrong. How silly of me, <laughs> surely duck. And index will equal to one. So index is not greater than two. Here's an example. Uh, let's say we had a vector B, uh, one, one, two. Index here will not be greater than two. So let's say, actually let's make it bigger. Let's say three, three, right. So initially first will be set to the value of one. Second will be set to the value of one as well. We will notice that the distance between a unique element, say A being one and a unique element B say two is uh, two. So it's not greater than two. We'll set first equal to two. So the next time through the loop, we'll consider two as being our starting unique element. And then we'll find three being our second uh, uh, unique element. All we're going to do is say first is equal to second, position is equal to the index. Uh, this, so then we don't have to keep on going back and starting at zero. We'll start at the most uh, recent index. And we'll set index, index equal to one because index finds distance. And then we'll get out of all of that crap. And let's do another special case. We check if last element has more than two occurrences. So uh, int last position is equal to numbers of size minus one. And we say while nums at last position, this will be the last uh, element, uh, is equal to nums at last uh, position minus two and last position minus two is not equal to zero. So, nums at size. So uh, we set our last element to be equal to the nums at size minus one. So let's say our element is of size four. Nums at size return four, but when iteration through, it'll be set to three, because iteration start at the value zero. That's why we are minusing one right here. Then we'll create a loop and we'll find out whether or not nums at the last position is equal to nums at the last position minus two. If this is true, it means that the last occurrence appears more than twice. And this last year just ensures that we are not working with the value of zero. Which now that I think about it, minus two not equal to zero. Hmm. This just seems a little redundant. And last position, minus two is not equal to zero. 
Let me think about this. So what I'm trying to say here. Ooh. But even if it is equal to zero. Last position minus two. Oh, okay. It's because I need the while loop. Okay. So nums dot pop back. Last position is equal to nums dot size. We need to change this because remember, once you pop an element, that last position uh, variable will not be the same. So we need to reassign a value. There we go. And then uh, we can. Do I want to loop over to show you the variables? No, I don't. I'm just going to do return nums dot size. And uh, yeah, that should be everything. Uh, where's the error? Return nums dot size. doesn't make sense to be in the loop we'll put it out here yep that makes more sense shift tab and we tab this out and then show everything here is the same okay great and uh this should work let's just go down here to our cases and instead of saying remove duplicates we'll say delete just call delete delete late yep delete Actually, that doesn't make sense. Let's go ahead and submit it to a uh, lead code and see what happens. Let's go here and let me do another submission. Ah, I hate this part. Let's do some formatting. Let's figure out if things here will work. Let's do a run. No name, no way so should do. Oh yeah, my mistake. I won't do puppets. There we go. So test case to give a wrong answer. Hmm. <laughs> so somewhere I did something wrong. Let's figure out. Output perspective. So it stayed the same. Okay, it's fine. We'll just go back and try sorting things out. Let's figure out. So my special cases return to no I'm sorry, raise pop back. Antivirus, I'll accept the risk, thank you. Base case second position index. While second is only equal to nums of back and index plus position is less than nums dot size. <coughs> While position plus index is equal to first and index plus position is less than nums dot size. Index plus equals one. It's because I did not set my value of second like a clown. Nums position plus index. That should sort things out. So, mm, so here, second is equal to nums. Because now, once we have this value right here, we found two unique elements. Therefore, we must now set that unique element. Do it coding while well, recording a video is not a good idea. So, uh, there we go. Everything here ran well. Four seconds, twenty seconds of runtime. Four seconds, please. Seconds, four well, milliseconds of runtime. Let's do a sample and see what happens. Uh, ch -ch 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 runtime error, addition of offset integer overflow. Uh, line, ch line ch -ch -ch expected one, one, one. So let's use that test case of one, one, one. Okay, so I'm sure I have the test case somewhere down here. One, one, yeah, I do. So let's do delete. 
I just see a complete test case. Lead test case return two, which is right, should return two. Uh, so I'm assuming it's a problem on their side of me having a, a should be this then, should be that. That should be the problem. So we'll do a nums.erase and we'll do nums.begin. So begin. This should sort things out. If we have an AAA, <laughs> runtime error by telling me my runtime is last expected input should return one one let me go over everything again that makes sense that makes sense it return two if numbers front you put numbers up back if numbers up front numbers back if number size is greater than two while numbers of size is greater than two numbers of erase it's because am i not just returning numbers dot size that should be why because i forget a return statement Hey, look, so silly mistakes, a silly mistake. So a mistake I made right here was I was removing the elements if it appeared more than twice and the element was the same, but I was forgetting to return the element. Well, huh, there we go. Uh, this one has a runtime of eight milliseconds with a memory of 62.77, but anyway, that's it. Hopefully I get better at making these lead code videos. Bye. 37 minutes, 